<laughs> so I'll be there too. <laughs> well, we'll all be here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we are doing another building the Vishla tonight. Oh, I've got us jacked up. Hold on. One second. I thought that this, I thought I did this right. Um, one second. All right, I'm Paul, that's Tony. Uh, and we are doing a little bit of campaign world building in Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Um, we are building this for the stream game. Uh, this is the game that we'll be running online and playing uh, on this stream. Uh, if you've seen other episodes, uh, you'll know that we have spent a lot of time building up this area. can't see that because I don't have the map screen. Building up this area um, of the southwest sort of end of the map. Um, We're confusing people now. Uh, I know. <laughs> oh, are we already? I'm not really Paul. He's not really Tony. Oh man. Well hey, Ed says he can hear us. Uh that's good. That's that's good. That means I didn't F up the audio tonight. That's awesome. But tonight we're gonna be focusing on the north east corner here, and I think given what I know, because Tony and I were talking before we went online tonight, uh I think I need to leave a little bit more of the north showing. Uh, Tony, on the Twitch, can you see the map? I can. Perfect. All right. So, Tony, what are we drinking tonight? Uh, tonight we are drink, drinking some uh, Modelo Especial. Nice. Uh, got it right here on the screen. Uh, I, My wife and I uh, eat Mexican food more often than I care to admit. And uh, I started drinking this beer when I actually visited uh, as near Mexico as I will ever be. and. Um, yeah. That's a nice. I've, this is a lager, right? No, it's Pilsner. It is. It, yeah, it's Pilsner, I believe. Yeah. So uh, this is actually the beer that taught me that uh, beer pairings with food makes make a lot of sense. Oh. Um, what do you pair I find this that with? The, uh, Mexican food. I think it's great with spicy food. Although, if it's going to be super spicy, I like to shift over to the Negra version of the Modelo. Okay. Uh, that's their, their dark beer. Uh, the Especial is just their lighter beer and uh, very flavorful for uh, just kind of the general freshness of real Mexican food. Nice. I can see it going really good, well with like a cilantro-based food. It's got that crisp, clean. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Absolutely. And I So like Italian beer, if you're drinking Peroni, it actually tastes better with Italian or Mediterranean food. Um, they just really complement one another. So it's kind of like wine that way, only not as snooty. Hey. I drink wine. Out well, I know, of a but... box. Exactly, exactly. That's <laughs> that's why I didn't think I would offend. No, you don't. Uh, I drink it out of a box because it's easier. It has a tap right on it. And let's be honest, Paul. Uh, we know we go way back, so yeah, we do. We've probably we've probably had a bottle or two of Boone's Farm together. So, oh, I know we have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, at least I have some vague recollection of that. It was probably Strawberry Hill. Uh, yeah, you, you tend not to remember those nights that no, started with Boone's Farm. No, they, they hurt. <laughs> they hurt in the morning. Boone's Farm is just the worst. <laughs> just the worst for a hangover. Um, exactly. A little too much sugar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't I don't drink a lot of sugary drinks, and uh, that's why. Yep. We, we had to learn that, though. College no. was a magical time. College is like Tahiti. It was a magical place. Uh <laughs> Uh, so tonight though, we are, well, we are drinking, but we're drinking, uh, more intelligently than we were in our college days. Uh, and that, that Let's is, hope. <laughs> that, that is, that is actually like a fun thing to bring up. Uh, uh, Tony and I do go back to, to college days. And so this is, uh, one of the things that's the magic of streaming, right? Like, uh, we would not be able to play D and D together until this kind of thing became available. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're yeah, uh, really separated close. by a, a part of the country that is very large. It's true. It's true. And and uh, one of the things I, I I would rather play at a table, but I would rather play with the people I like playing with. So of all the things, I'll take playing online. 
any day. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, all right. So tonight we are back in the Northeast section. Uh, last week we had Percy here who, um, Tony, I don't, you, you watched a little of last week, right? Yeah, I was online. I, yeah. I watched it all. Okay. Um, we, we, we learned a little bit about Adenac, the underwater city that Percy's bard is coming from. Percy is playing a sort of water elemental creature, uh, who is on the run, uh, from a couple of things. One of which is, is his parents broke the pact of the elements, uh, and were living, uh, sort of under the radar in Adenac. And then on top of that, his parents took out a sizable loan from some loan sharks, and now he is trying to raise money and send it back to his folks before they are, well, before the loan comes due. Uh, so he has come in, and uh, one of the things, just to bring your attention before we start the conversation, is we are starting our adventures in the city of Crimson Witch. Uh, can you see that on the screen? Uh, I can. I can. I can zoom it in a little bit. Yeah, no, we got it. Okay. Uh, so it's 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 a. Uh, we decided last week that it's uh, a logging town that has all of a sudden found some riches. What those riches are is yet to be determined. Um, but people are starting to move there in droves, and so his character moved there as a bard in order to sort of make money off of all these people now moving to Crimson Witch. Uh, the other thing that we know is that Buxleydale over here is a province of the Donacam Empire, and they are at war, or not at war, they're in a cold war, and potentially escalating into a hot war with this empire to the east that is yet to be named or know anything about them. So that's what we know thus far. Given that bit of information, let's find out about your character. Uh, so, who are you going to be playing? Uh, my character's name is Ulfur Bjelfsen, uh, and he is um, uh, he is going to... I, we just changed some of this, so I have to scribble yeah. out some of my own notes here. Um, he is a shifter. Okay. Um, there was a part of me that wanted to keep that quiet until it happened the first time, but I don't think that's actually possible. Yeah. Um, I think uh, he'll be starting as a druid, the shifter, and then we'll multi-class into barbarian down the road. Uh, Ulfur is from uh, the mountain, is all that his family and their clan call it, so... Uh, that was partly because I didn't want to take all of the agency away from the person creating this land, and partly because, uh, well, it just seems kind of cool for the backstory, frankly. Uh, they are unaware that there are likely other mountains. Um, <laughs> and they're, uh, they are a people who keep to themselves up in the high parts of the mountain. Um, I don't know how far you want me to go with all this, so you just tell me. Well, that's a, a pretty good place to start doing a little building here. So I have moved maps over to the main Navishla map. And I'm going to hopefully move it down. All right. And zoom. So I was thinking maybe the mountain is up in this northern reach here. And good. Drop a mountain, a big ass mountain, right here maybe. Maybe it maybe it blocks this. Maybe it makes this. It's so big it turns this giant land stretch, this two hundred mile stretch of land here, it turns it into an isthmus almost. Oh, that's kind of cool. Water yeah. on both sides. I like yeah. that. Yeah. All right. So that I was totally looking at the map backwards for the longest time, and I couldn't figure out why you were putting mountains in the water. Oh, but... okay. I might throw... I know you said it's one, but maybe it's like all the rest of these things are... I create just a little bit of a range here. 
Yeah, in, in my head, it was a very secluded place. So having a mountain range that kind of protect it and keep it uh, more remote, I think that makes total sense. Perfect. So we'll do this sort of business here. Turn it in hills. Coming in. There we go. All right. And so this is just called in, like now, you're playing a shifter. Um, you're the first one. So nobody else has chosen this. Uh, we don't have to call them shifters. Um, you know, with the with the ones that are sort of Tolkien-esque, you know, it sort of seems like, okay, an elf is an elf is an elf. Let's just call them elves. But with things that are a little bit more flavorful, we can call them what we want. Um, shifter Well, that's words. fantastic. That is good to know, because I actually think the word that I would like to use from my backstory is Ulfhaden. Ulfhaden. So this yeah. is, so all shifters that turn into what you turn into. Correct. Would are, be Ulfhaden. 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 U-L-F-H-A-D-E-N? H-E-D-I-N-N. And hey, Wolf Hayden equals shifters, lupine kind of shifters. Correct. Perfect. And, and the backstory for this, uh, have, did you? We talked last week with Percy about the um, uh, the dragons and how they factor into the world here. Correct. Yeah, a little bit. So the dragon that we are aligned to is Kwaiti, and um, Kwaiti is the smallest of the wolf, uh, or of the wolf, uh, of mm -hmm. the, um, the worm lords, and he is the person that we, um, we kind of worship, and he created us, is, is our belief. He created us from the wolves on the mountain. Give me the name again, one more time. <laughs> Which one? The dragon name. The dragon name is Kwaiti, K-W-A, apostrophe I-T-I. T-I, and it's the smallest. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to shift screens here. We already have, so one of the things I realized is, is everybody's going to have a different name for different dragons. Right? Like... Just because your character, your group calls him Kwahiti doesn't mean that's what everybody calls him or her. Correct. So, uh, one things that I was thinking was to I have a bunch of dragons. I have all fifteen dragons with main names, and then I have a, a column for like regional names sort of thing. So All right. Um okay. Like this like shit you're right. Yeah. All right. But you can. So hold on. Switch. Right, can you see that okay? Uh, I can see a bright light. I feel myself moving. There it is. Okay. It's it's overshooting the like something's wrong with it, but uh it's showing so much of the. I know. What? Okay. So, is it readable at all? Yeah, I can read it. Not you just made it smaller. That made it for there. We go. Can we? There we go. 
You actually made it smaller, not yeah. bigger. That help at all? I mean, the table itself is smaller. When you there, you go. Okay. I'm. So, I have the delay. Don't forget. Right. I was just thinking that. Um, I, took me a minute. <laughs> do you have a color in mind? Or I don't. Okay. I don't actually. In fact, some of the stuff on here, I kind of. Um, I'm not necessarily tied to any one thing. In my mind, it's the smallest of the dragons uh, in my backstory because uh, we were told, our people were told all along that the animals on the mountain were turned into humanoids to protect her and to be her companions. Oh. And if there is another backstory for the dragon that you introduce to me later, I'm fine with that. Right. Like I'm, I'm fine that's with our what, people. That's what your people kind of, taught. Right. That I'm, I'm fine with that being kind of a blind faith sort of thing. Uh, well, it's not really blind because we actually do talk to the dragon. <laughs> well, but if, if the dragon's a dirty liar, I'm okay with that. So, Here's a fun thing. I had made, I had already written up a couple things. One is this: you wanted to be in a North Cold Clam, so that would be a white dragon, for one. Two, they are the smallest of the chromatic dragons. Okay. I don't know that, that they're the smallest of all dragons, according to D and D lore, which we don't have to follow, by the way. Um, but according to the normal D and D lore, white dragons are usually amongst the smallest of the dragons. But I'd already decided that the white dragon was the youngest. It was the last. Okay. One. It was the last one to hatch. And uh, okay. so the name, the 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 name that the dragons, other dragons call the white dragon is Gaiyun Sionsu. Uh, okay, making which, it as difficult on me as possible. Got it. Doesn't matter because you're also known as Frisan. Also okay. known as Kwa. Cool. Perfect. I might even get rid of Frisan because I just put that in there. So I'm gonna just keep quiet. Have you guys give the names? So, all right. So you were cre. Uh, and the other thing is, is I decided to get rid of. Um, kind of alignments with dragons uh, and give them more personalities. And so the personalities of the white dragon is physicality, athleticism, hunting, and survival. Those, that's dragon prizes. So the hunting and survival makes sense, um, but the, the idea of the honor, loyalty, and family, um, that's kind of what our people connect with okay so i don't know if it makes sense to maybe be more the toward the bronze dragon but i get the whole white dragon part of it um and that would be fine if you wanted to have the bronze dragon so that's actually in the table game that's what ed's character uh that they uh that's ixalanthus uh that's that's his people's main dragon he they're they're they credit that dragon with their people um well but, that I'll, would be I'll fine. Stick, I'll I'll stick with the white dragon because the physicality and athleticism that's going to go along with the character that I'm creating too. We can also do, um, clan. Um, people, and put that in there. Uh, but I mean, even if it, that might be a value your people have that because. Uh, Kwaiti created you, you know, and takes care of you, uh, or at least created you to to have company. Maybe, you know, may not be Gaiyun Sionsu's value, but it's it would be your people's value that came from that. Got it. Uh, so they they don't have to be. It, these are Greek gods. They're they're kind of jackasses. So. Gotcha. Uh, uh, I'm also looking at this and thinking to myself, I'm clearly going to need to create a white dragon mug now. 
Nice. For when we start playing. They're one of my favorite uh, uh, art in the monster manual, is the white dragon. I love, love the way it's floating over the uh, the snowscape. Uh, okay. So that will bring us to... That will save those changes. Y-E-T. Perfect. All right. Then we'll go back to... Um, do, 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 do. Wonder Draft. And we've got the mountain, which might get a different name down the road here. Um, but we'll keep it for now. I'm going to put it in. Or uh, I'm sorry, quotations as well. Uh, Thank you. Okay. The mountain. All right. So we have your character who has um, Ulfar of the Ulfadin. Who, why has he? Is it a he? Yep. Yes. Well, why has he left the mountain? Ah, so uh, Ulfar is the. Um, largest of his clan and that is how they choose who will become the next leader um and he is like head and shoulders larger than anyone else in his clan uh in the next generation of his clan and um when they get to a certain age in the old Hayden, they are uh they start to um experience some changes uh, and no, I don't mean puberty, Ed, um, <laughs> um, or Dusty, for that matter. Uh, w the changes that they start going through is they um, they start to receive their markings. Uh, and to give just an idea, if if anyone listening uh, cares to know, the the I guess some of the inspiration came from this. Uh, for this came from the Native Americans of the Northwest. Uh, and there is a particular clan, and this might sound familiar to some, um, there's a particular clan who believe that they are descendants of wolves. Um, this is the story that was um, unceremoniously ripped off in the uh, Twilight Saga. Um, <laughs> and uh, the author d never, ever gives credit to where these stories came from. And uh, I find that very, very sad. So some of it is kind of a blend of North, Norse mythology with that Northwestern Native American tradition. So, Paul, that might even help you with some of the, uh, um, the spellings and things like that. Like if you think Native American spellings, if you think Norse mythology, you're going to get closer than uh, maybe you might have otherwise. Got it. Okay. Um, but uh, once they reach this certain age and their markings start to materialize, and generally they materialize on, on their body somewhere, on their uh, torso somewhere, um, they go on, on basically a spirit quest uh, called, and I even have a name for this already, uh, called the Feintrond. Um, and when they're out on their Feintrond, their goal is to find communion with their with their their god the dragon that they worship um that they are family with and it's the first time that they will commune individually but they do it after they have to leave the mountain and basically they're becoming who they will become um for some it happens very very quickly but for ulfer uh he's been on his uh Feintron now for more than two years and hasn't really found his way, uh, mostly because he has stayed very solitary up to this point. Um, basically kind of hiding out. He believed that that's how he would connect, uh, but that hasn't worked. So he's going to be trying other tactics. Interesting. Stay. It's now. So, so you get a fun little build thing here. So okay. for the first two years, did you move north or south from the mountain? 
Um, I would imagine Ofer would have not gone too far because I would, in my mind, I am imagining that he believed that because he was going to become the store, the next leader, because this was in his future, that he believed everything would happen very quickly. So I can see him wandering the mountain, maybe uh, wandering the range of mountains a little bit, uh, sticking to the north, maybe in that area above the mountain range or north of the mountain range. Um, and along the water, uh, you know, the mountain is close to the water, so they would have had access to fresh water. And uh, there are other clans uh, also, and some of them would be water clans um, that are up along those way, uh, up along those areas. But he stayed very isolated, so I would say he's he's probably hiding out in the mountains and uh, is just starting to come down to experience more. So he's just now heading south. Does he run in it? What does he run into? Is it wilderness? This is the Donakam Empire. I am assuming a good chunk of it goes, you know, this direction. West. But is he running into the Empire when he gets into the foothills here? I, You know, I... I haven't thought that far through, to be honest. Like no, where he's no. gonna? I, I'm, at, I'm we're 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 improving. All right. Uh, <laughs> I could see maybe um, as he came down, maybe he experienced and uh, set up camp around this lake somewhere. This, uh, I think that's this, a lake. The this, small the small body of water you just ran into. Yep. Okay. Right. Um, and maybe he's done some, you know, just kind of exploring the wilderness out there. I don't know if there are other um, towns up in that area or if they will, there will be. Sure can be. Um, definitely. All of this is getting built as we go. Uh, I, I, I would say this. I'm open to um, that part of my story um, evolving as we know, kind of um, as we get further down the road and we are trying to figure out how everyone's going to hook up together right so it could be that i i just keep wandering after being at this lake for a while and wander into the town where other people are okay i can so it also could be and i'll just throw this out there uh this might be an interesting flavor is if this solitary life finally he wants to be around some other people and that's why he wanders into the closest town Okay. Whatever that turns out to be. I like it. I think what I'm going to, given that, I'm going to call this area here. Oh, I'm not going to call it this giant. <laughs> um. Whoa. Um. So, uh, this. Settlements generate steps. Nope. Sterile. Nope. Like uh, sterile. Yeah, I don't care for that too much. That just seems like boner reach. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Boner Reach was not your best work, Paul. No, I didn't write it. Uh, I didn't make it up. That one was clearly not said out loud before you uh, nope. put it in the map. Well, Bone Reach was, but Boner Reach <laughs> didn't occur to me until we got it. Uh, so, yeah, not my best work. Uh, uh, I think... Say all of this... Field wastes. All right, so this is like grassland, and it's called the quill fields. I'm just making this up on the fly here, because uh, it's got like razor grass in it. Cool. Uh, and you have to be careful walking through it, or you wander through razor grass. Uh, that doesn't sound like fun. 
No, I'm gonna say it's populated with uh, displacer beasts and other kind of fun shit. Um, and so you stuck mostly to the coastline of the lake. Saw uh, it's, uh, Karst Karsten Loch uh, down in the distance in the direction. I It doesn't look as junky. All right, so eventually you will make your way to Crimson Witch. That's where we're starting the adventure. Okay. So what sort of things, anybody that you want to have met or, because um, I'm going to get into your backstory a little bit more on your family, your your clan and everything else, but first I want to see about getting you over to Crimson Witch. Um, Unless it makes more sense for me to go back there. Like, are your parents both still around? They are. I, my family is still all around. Uh, my father is, uh, and this is where some of the Norse comes from, my father is Bjalf Knutsen. He is also, he is also Uh So he is the same kind of shifter that I am. Uh, my mother is Ife Skaldmare. Um, and Skald mare meaning shield maiden. Uh, so that might come into play down the way. And then I have younger twin siblings, Degnir and Agatha. Twin siblings. That's fun. Uh, and so did they do vision? They're younger? They're younger, so they haven't gotten to this point yet. Okay, so they don't have their markings yet. Uh, and how long does the spirit quest usually take? Um, it, it takes as long as it needs to. So you could be gone for years and nobody would be surprised. Or... Correct. Uh, I think, you know, I think the way I picture it is he is kind of getting to the longer end of things. Okay. Um, uh, only because he kind of misinterpreted what he was supposed to be doing. And there's some twists down the road. I don't think he uh, wants to follow the path that everyone else believes he should follow. And I think that might all come out in the story uh, as we as we continue on. Sure. You don't have to, you don't have to tell everything. Um, yeah. I, I, what, I guess what I'm saying is uh, I don't think he's going to be the kind of leader that everyone believes he should be. And the people... The Ulf Hayden are very vicious people, if I didn't say that already. Okay. No, I, I don't know that you have. Do Are you permitted to return before you've completed your spirit quest? No, not not if I, if I want to become the store, the leader. Okay. Right. But what if you don't care? Back and just be like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. Uh, that's not something that's been done before. But it, 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 you don't actually, right? It could be. So if that gets folded into the into the the um the campaign somehow, it could be very interesting. Got it. Okay. And so, as far as you know, your family's fine. Everything's going on okay up there. Uh, yep. You started off heading north a little bit. You've wandered around the coast. You've been wandering around in isolation hoping that something happens from just your isolation and then you realize after a year and change nothing's happened none of the things that you thought would occur have so yeah. maybe you need to go live amongst the people yeah Ulfer has some wisdom but not a lot of intelligence so he's uh, uh it, it, it took a while to occur to him that if he is to become the leader it probably means that he needs to figure out some things relationally with other people. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not picturing him being dumb necessarily, but I, I'm not picturing him being 
uh, the brightest bulb either. Okay. So he's just sort of, you know, yeah, like wisdom. Like oh. I, I always think of Caduceus for that. He's great at being like, I have no idea how any of that works. But a wise right. person would leave. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And okay. the other thing that I don't think I mentioned is he's only 17. So he's still very much a, a an adolescent trying to find his way. So that matters. Okay. So he is very young. How old is he? 17. Okay. He left when he was 15. Uh, as the lore goes, after 15 winters is when he left the mountain to complete his Feintrond, and it's been more than two winters uh, have passed since. Okay. So we have this adolescence wandering south. Uh, he's left the mountains. He's gone through the quill field wastes, comes to Campston Lock, which is going to have forests all the way around it. So you will re-enter what will seem to you to be lowland forests. You'll see a mountain range to the southwest across the lake. The mountains will be nothing. They're, they're like the Appalachians to the Rockies uh, uh, for you. Mountain range to the north is a much larger this is sort of an old geological uh, Got it. And then you would wander around the east side of the lake and come to a sort of logging encampment that appears to have come into wealth. How long at the beginning of the campaign will you have wanted to have been in Simwich? Witch? I think just arriving makes sense. Okay. Just arriving. Uh, and it will be... So this is new information here, because I'm deciding it right this minute. Uh, <laughs> okay. Crimson Witch will be a Mott and Bailey fortification. So it'll be surrounded by a log, um, log picket wall. Um, and it will be have a small garrison of Donacam Empire Guards. Making some notes to myself. Small garrison. That's relatively so new. You wouldn't use that though. There's probably something else that we should throw out there uh, okay. as we're talking about him encountering other people in Crimson Witch. Uh, one of the, you just the things that's very interesting is that, what's that? You went robot on me there for a second, so I didn't hear Oh, it. sorry. Uh, one, one of the things that's very interesting about Ulfur is that while most of the people in his clan, their markings start somewhere on their chest and their torso, his actually started on his face, so he, it is not something that he can hide. What do they look like? Are there any? Are they just abstracted, or are they? Do they have the appearance of like? Would they give somebody the sense of an animal totem, or uh, or what, are they more abstract than that, or even uh, like religious? It, it's definitely an animal totem. Uh, I'll hold up a picture. Uh, it might be kind of weird on camera, but I'll hold up a picture to see if folks can see it. Okay, that's going around your face. Yep. Like the eyes are where the eyes would be. Yep. Cool. I, I see the tongue is coming down on the chin and okay. all of that kind of stuff. All right. Cool. And they're not fully formed, so they, they will continue to form as we play. And it will form, it will eventually cover his body, uh, but it's starting on his face rather than on his torso. Fun. Okay. And that's, that's very weird. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the lore is that it normally starts on the torso because it comes from the heart. Uh, um, and uh, for him, that it's starting on his face is, is very much a mystery. It was a mystery to his family before he left. I'm sure as part of conversation now that he's gone and uh, will make him much um, harder to uh, blend in anywhere else. Okay. 
Cool. That has given me a lot to work. Um, all right. Let's see. Let me go to my questions. Know about your ancestral home. Um, we know about naming, sort of, right? Mm -hmm. Uh. Your character's primary motivation. Now we know you're on a spirit quest. How? That's the question. How will we know when he's solved it or that he's completed it? Uh, I guess some of that I'm going to leave up to you. Okay. Um, uh, as well, the spirit comes to me and we have that conversation, um, I would imagine that I'm going to have to go through a few levels of figuring out the uh, what I can shift into because that's not an automatic for me. Um, and once, I mean, I know, okay, let me back up the Ulf Hayden Ulf is wolf. Yep. That's where that comes from. That's where my name comes from. So I know that, that I'm connected to the wolf. I don't know necessarily what that all means. And it hasn't happened because I haven't had that communion with Kwa'iti yet. Got it. So when you have some sort of sign from Kwa'iti, that will potentially let you know that you're done or will continue the quest. Correct. So that, but you're yep. leaving that to me. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, oh, I love, this is one of my favorites. Uh, do your people have a beginning time and an end time story? Uh, beginning time is uh, we, we were... There are several clans around the mountain. Um, okay. I envision that there there's a water clan that I, that there are that maybe are connected to the uh, whales or something like that. That there's a bear clan. I imagine there I, that there's an eagle clan. Um, but we were created by Kwaiti from the animals that were on the mountain when Kwaiti arrived. Got it. And that's, so that is, that, that's the origin story. Do you, do they have right. an end time story? Uh, not yet. Okay. So life will go on. Uh, as, as far as, as far as Ulfer knows, everything's good back on the mountain. Um, Kwaiti is still, uh, Kwaiti. Um, everyone is still kind of doing their thing. Okay, perfect. And and I should say the because the mountain is kind of secluded, um, the wolves that we were descendant from are abnormally large. Um, it is it is remote up there. There's not a lot of interaction with other people. Although on some of the spirit quests, I'm sure there have been some interactions with people along the way. I'm sure that some adventurers have been up there at some point or another. But sure. that's all foreign to Ulfer. Okay. Yeah, it's super remote. People don't go up there. Um, and I think we're going to partly say because crossing over the mountain to get into the northern reaches would be extraordinarily difficult. And they would have to go through your people, who you said are quite brutal. And right. before they even get to the foothills of that mountain chain, they have to go through the Quillfield Wastes, which are unpleasant. So it's already just not a place people go. Now, yeah. some people could sail into there. Right. Um, but we would say you've got your people of the whale who are over there who have made right. it inhospitable. And it, it we'll also say you need to kind of use an icebreaker. Right, because it's cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay, perfect. All right, so... The... Now, could other people have gone across the ice? I'm sure there are some Minnesotans out there who say absolutely they could, but uh, a sane human would not. Yeah, there's going to be some crazy adventurers who have been up there and they've seen it and they've told stories of your people and they're in books and the learned people know who you are. It's not like you're a mystery to everyone. Um, but only, but mostly unknown. And then right. the other thing I think, uh, well, 
about the other thing. I was just thinking, uh, oh. uh, okay, what I was thinking of as I was uh, trying to make a joke and then I lost it and I was trying to get back to it somehow, but it was about Minnesotans walking across the <laughs> the ice, but yet one of them still wearing shorts and a parka, you know? Well, that that would have been me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, As, I'm super cold out, but I'm still wearing shorts. But I'm that would have been Parker. me 30 years ago, not yeah. me today. Yeah. Me, me today. I'm still wearing shorts when it's in the 40s here in Florida, but that's because that's how I was raised. 40 <laughs> degrees was the beginning of summertime. Yeah. Yeah. As as uh, Sean Dwyer's family said, that's bathing suit weather. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, all right. I think I got a good handle on it. The, I have one last question for you going into the first, you know, and we'll have another meeting with everybody who's playing, uh, to see how everybody wants their characters to interact a session zero. Cool. But well, the question I have is, is, is there a person, another character, an NPC that, you know, in Crimson Witch or not? Like, is there maybe, did you have a friend that you made in the quill field? Like another, maybe a hermit that lived in the quill field wastes? Uh, is there anybody, or have you been alone for the last two years with no interaction with another person other than cursory, like I ran into a trading post and got some food? And... Is there anybody that you made, made friends with? And you could feel free to improv here. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about things here. Um, you know, I think when 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 met, our people are hospitable. Okay. Um, we are vicious when provoked. Um, so I don't think I've met any enemies, but I don't know that I've made any friends. Okay. And um Ulf was a bit of a rebel growing up. So people looked to him but not in the ways that you know were good. Huh. It was trouble he was a troublemaker, not a rebel. He was a troublemaker. Different ways of doing things. Never never wanted to follow the rules. Sort of like a person who was righteously not following the rules or a dick? Um, probably somewhere in the middle. Okay. Just, just lost. Okay. As a person. Okay. So the, it, it is, I, uh, I could imagine that the people, the other Ulf Hayden, are probably a little bit apprehensive about Ulf becoming the store ah yeah we don't want this guy okay yeah but again when you're head and shoulders above everybody else and the largest among you becomes your leader that's uh <laughs> things happen that's a that's a thing who wants to challenge the guy that's a foot and a half taller than everybody right that makes sense okay so I've got I've got this sort of troubled youth knows he's going to be he's been groomed provided he does his spirit quest correctly uh to be the leader of his clan he's been wandering around he already feels a little bit trepidatious because traditionally the markings show up on his chest but they haven't they've shown up on his face and what does that mean and he has no answers, and he's it's been quiet for two years. He hasn't heard anything from Kwaiti. And now he's moving into the south. He's been he's seen a couple of strange places, and he's just now wandering around into really straight up what one would call more of a European civilization. From like with the town's roadways infrastructures that are Western Civ type of things, or or Far East or Civ, but definitely not rural as much. So, 
or cool. Yeah, there's going to be governance. There's going to be uh, uh, governance that's hierarchical in a way that maybe is a little different. It's feudal. So, okay. I think unless you got other things we should talk about, I I, I think that gets us where we're going. <laughs> No, I th- I think that's where I'm at right now. I I, uh, I like it. I'm still working. I'm still working on the build in D and D Beyond and uh, kind of what it all means. But I've got some resources for that. Uh, I've I've written out a bit of the backstory, which you already have. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, I hope that there I've planted some seeds that have oh, yeah. given you some some things to work with uh, as it will impact me and it will impact the uh, the the two games that are going to be happening in this world. For sure. For sure. You've given me quite a few things that could become very interesting. Uh, we've got, uh, so far out of the five people playing on this game, we've got uh, two people who got a, got somebody on the run who's got a debt to pay, or they're going to have a price on their head, and we have another person who is uh, waiting for a sign from God. Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, and, and I'm on a mission from God. God. I'm on a mission from God. Uh, but uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, who who is going to be a stranger in a strange land? Uh, yeah. So even more so, I think than even Percy's character, who's been wandering around this area for a little while. So uh, we will uh, we'll pick this back up in a in a week here. Uh, cool. Yeah. You know, and uh, just you asked the question about is there anybody that I would any friend or anything like that? Yeah, I can see because of the um, uh, because Kwaiti is the smallest of the dragons. Um, I could see Ulf being uh, drawn to being a protector for the smaller. Okay. In stature. So if you can work that into uh, maybe how I connect with other characters in the game, or um, I'll probably let you you play uh, that out actually. But uh, protector of the small stature. That that might help me for NPC builds. Uh, oh, there you go, there you go. Stature, cool. All right, got it. All right. Yeah, this has been fun though. Thanks. Yeah, yeah this was fun. Thanks for thanks for uh, coming on and uh, helping build the world here. Uh, so, uh, announcement for the channel: uh, we have tabulated our votes. We had 13 people in our channel vote, which is awesome. Uh, and we will be raising funds in September for Planned Parenthood nationwide. And so. Uh, Look for ways to help support that cause on our channel for the next, well, from September 1st to September 30th. Uh, switch whatever we vote for next, but uh, Planned Parenthood, that's who we're raising funds for. Uh, and also uh, encouraging people to donate their time and and uh, energy in other ways, too, as they can. Whatever it is you can do. Uh, so uh, the next time we're going to be live on this channel will be... Sunday, uh, and we're a little unclear of whether we're going to be playing a morning game or an evening game, uh, but it will be Call of Cthulhu, uh, and that will be Sunday, and then on Monday, the return of the Warbler Brothers, Monday at 6 o'clock, Sheboygan, Miami of the Midwest time. Oh, sorry, Malibu of the Midwest time. So, uh, until then... Uh, roll some dice, play some games, give your time and treasure to meaningful causes. Thanks, everybody, and have a good night. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. We're out.